Hey everybody, today is uh, kind of middle of March here in Indiana. It's a it's a beautiful Saturday, and I'm gonna spend the day at least for uh, I don't know a good portion of the day out scouting. I thought I would uh, bring my GoPro around, and maybe you guys would enjoy following me around scouting today. Maybe we'll find maybe some sheds and um, some good stuff out scouting. So um, this area I'm going to scout is actually an area uh, that Dan hunted quite a bit uh, while he was down here in Indiana. So it's obviously it's a pretty big area. So we're gonna take a look in there and see if we can find anything good and maybe uh, pick out a few spots to set this year. All right, so I made it to uh, the spot I'm gonna scout. And <clears throat> what I like to do um, when I go into a new piece of, of ground, I really haven't been in this part of this uh, um, piece of public, <clears throat> is I tried to find unobvious transition areas and there's actually one that's really close to the road right here and uh, from a map you really can't see it but if you you, you look here um, there's also one of them them uh, mushrooms that Dan likes to pick up I think that one hmm. uh, I don't know about this one I think Dan take a bite out of that one anyway if you look here next to the the road just right up here and on the other side of the road there's a bunch of crop fields um, but from a map it just looks like a, a woods but in reality um, there's a lot of underbrush a lot of these green briars and I find here uh, where I live at <clears throat> the deer really like those green briars they uh, they tend to they bed in it for one and secondly they do like to, to snip at it every now and again and eat it um, but then which I don't know if you'll be able to see on the video but right up in there there's a uh, where kind of the woods opens up and then goes back into the public farther so here's my theory on this spot is I think a lot of maybe the bigger deer may be living up here by the road because it'd be hard to hunt them in between the road and the crop fields and they may just come in here bed in here stage in here um, during the day and they head out to the crops when it gets dark across the road um, kind of my theory don't know if it's happening yet or not I do know that when I drive down this road at night, a lot of times there's deer coming coming out across uh, the road into the crop fields. So I've never seen a big buck doing that, uh, but almost every night when I drive down that road after I'm done hunting here, um, does or something are crossing the field. So let's keep going. So I'm kind of just working, making my way through this tangled mess of this uh, area right next to the road here, and I was following some deer trails. You can see that's a pretty defined deer trail going up to the road up there and um, looks like a decent little rub there nothing nothing too crazy yet but uh, I think where the bedding's going to be is probably going to be on that transition overlooking the um, the woods so <clears throat> I guess my goal today is to find where they're bedding over there and then find a spot in this kind of tangled mess that I can set up on that I think they'd be moving through um, in daylight hours to wait to go out to the crop fields after after dark all right, there's a little better, smaller rub from this year. That's about thigh high and the top's about waist high here. Not quite what I'm looking for yet though. Just looking for a sign that's telling me there's a big buck living in this area. Old dead doe laying there. It's actually the second dead deer, dead deer I found in this little circle right here, so that's not good. All right, you can see here, well, I think you can see here, another really heavy trail going out to the crop fields. So, um, it's a good sign. I like this area because if you can tell behind me, it's like a low area. And I, I oftentimes uh, feel like deer like to cross areas in those low areas um, where they kind of feel safe and secluded. And actually there's a little pond right here I'm seeing now. Let's go check that out. You can see this pond that's kind of tucked away in here. I could not see this on the map. So, this is a spot that I will probably mark on my map for early season and come and see if deer are coming to it. Specifically if we're having a hot, um, you know, a hot uh, late summer, early fall, whatever the case may be. And for example, this year in Indiana, during the rut in November, it got hot. If I don't know if you guys remember when Dan was here, it was almost 80 degrees in November here. This would be another good spot to set up uh, during the rut over this pond because I would imagine all these deer that are I'm um, living in this little bedding area that you can see I'm uh, it's, it's around me probably gonna come and hit this water because I don't think there's a lot of water 
um, other than back here there's a lake way back in here but uh yeah so i'm gonna mark this on my uh, my map and probably go come check it later in the year all right here's another really good trail going out to the, those crop fields and honestly those <laughs> these trails have only been about 50 yards apart um kind of through this bedding area here this thick area so um there's for sure deer using it <clears throat> but i have not seen that great big buck sign which um which is what we're all looking for right <clears throat> um at least in areas where um you feel like you have security cover it's important also to have good buck sign but i'm not going to give up on this spot for sure yet because uh i know there's big deer in this area so there's also quite a bit of human sign up here real close to the road i don't know we're kind of close enough to the road where that could have been blown um, blown off out in here from the road uh, just someone littering from their vehicle but uh, anyway i think i'm going to kind of maybe x this area off on the map and go back a little bit uh, farther down the road and see what i see <clears throat> i know like it's not real exciting to um you know watch me walk around and just find deer trails but i think one thing to note that's really important and something you can learn is um this although this looks like there's a lot of deer sign here and there's obviously a lot of deer using it i just don't think the big bucks are using it and and whenever that is the case you really need to just forget about deer sign and start looking for buck sign big buck sign so just move on from those areas um maybe this spot is too close to the road and too many people get come in here right off the road and hunt for a quick hunt and then then leave and there's just too much pressure for big bucks to use it much i don't know but we're going to keep on going down the um down into the public a little farther and see what we see so no more than i turn my camera off after that last little scene is i, I noticed some old historical rubs here uh, that are not really fresh at all but you can see they're pretty high they're about waist high in the middle and then on up but again not uh not fresh time we want to see but at least there has been a big buck living in here in the past something that i really pay attention to if you have like wildlife management areas or um uh you know public land areas that have uh social media pages i like to follow those on my facebook this particular one does have a social media page and from time to time they'll post pictures of deer that have been shot in here um you know sheds that uh people find and and in this particular area um they actually have really started promoting hunting and shed hunting in here um so and i i have noticed since they started doing that an increase of just people around um, I've probably been coming in here for uh, eight or so years and back eight years ago there really wasn't very many people that hunted this area and now I mean just coming in there was a car parked in the parking spot on a you know in the middle of March here so um, I don't know what they were doing if they were scouting or just there's also some hiking trails in here but nonetheless give you maybe a, a little tip reach out to or do some Facebook searching and see if the wildlife management areas or the um, or the DNR have uh, Facebook pages. Okay, I'm walking back into this uh, piece of public and um, I started to notice a, a drop off in elevation right over here. And it's a very subtle drop off. There's not there's not much of a drop off. Then I got on my Onyx and I put in uh, looked at the top of the lines and there is a little bit of a drain that, that goes down. Uh, out to the field so instead of walking up here on top I'm going to assume that the deer are probably going to maybe be walking down a little bit lower uh, even though there is a good deer trail but I, I think the big bucks will be walking down lower this elevation change I'm talking about it's not hill country elevation it's a very slight just real slow steady maybe 50 yard elevation drop and then it goes uh, flattens out and go back goes back up again so let's go over there and look at that see if there's better buck sign as opposed to up here on this top level <coughs> As you can see, it's really monotonous in here. There's a lot of these kind of mid-range sized trees along with green bry everywhere. And it can be daunting to try to figure out where the deer are living at in this, uh, on this uh, piece of, of land because everything looks the same, kind of like you guys have up uh, in, up north um, where, where all these the big woods is all kind of the same. This is what you're looking for, little, little dips in elevation um even things that maybe in the topo lines don't pick up is what, is what the what these deer will, will likely be traveling uh on so let's go down here and look all right so um we just came from right up in there and you can see it goes downhill here and flattens off and right away when i came over the hill pretty decent rub right there so 
oh man there's an old really good rub right there so let's uh let's keep going and see what we see all right i'm back in here and you guys can i don't know if you'll be able to tell but the the elevation changes again right up on that uh that that ridge over there and i don't know it's not much of a ridge but it may it may go up 30 feet and then flatten back out uh, probably not even 30 feet probably more like 15 feet so i'm kind of going to walk through here and just see if there's a particular deer trail that deer like to travel and then probably work my way back into the uh, public and to see if uh, if there's any good bedding areas back that way as soon as i got to the bottom there is clearly a uh, heavily used deer trail that goes up through here oh and then look here right along this trail on this little cedar probably the one of the biggest rubs i've seen today so far so in this area this is for sure uh the best looking so uh that I, that I found and i think we actually are really close to the transition of this green briar and then the open uh open woods up there so i'm going to kind of make my way up towards the crop fields just to double check some things and all i'm looking for is to, to make sure this does this just see where it goes essentially make sure see if it does go out to the crop field see if it just parallels the road or something um who knows but let's go find out all right so it does look like uh the trail goes right out to the road up here and uh it was uh beans last year so i'm assuming it's probably going to be corn this year that's not necessarily always true but um it's probably going to be corn this year and something i noticed a lot of you guys up north or, or have that have the seasons that start in september you seem to focus on uh soybeans and that's probably the right thing to do. Like they're probably, that's probably their main food source that time of year. But here in Indiana, ours start October 1st. So I like to, I like cornfields. I like to have that, uh, I think I think they live, or they, they like to be in a cornfield more that time of year than um, soybean fields, uh, especially ones that are uh, usually by October 1st, our soybean fields here are pretty brown. And I think that loses, they lose a lot of their palatability whenever they become completely brown until obviously late in the year, if there's still soybeans up um, but just something to think about if you're ever out of state and you're from a state early season where it starts in September it's kind of a different food source in my opinion and maybe people from Indiana have have found different scenarios but <clears throat> I like cornfields and as I'm walking here another decent rub okay here's that heavy trail that goes back into what I'm hoping is some bedding obviously there could be bedding all around here but I think I'm going to go ahead and pick out a tree in this area and I'm going to tell you why um, explain to you why I kind of like this area if you look um, now not that a deer they could get through here but this green briar here is I don't know it's over my head tall probably eight feet tall and thick as it can be um, there is no place for a deer to um, to get through right here at all now they may be able to go up there and around but right here it's nasty and thick they could get through there if they wanted to but they're not going to prefer it it's the same scenario right down here right down in there is all kinds of nasty thick stuff so this is almost like a little funnel area and obviously it's a funnel area that you're not going to be able to see on a map um, but these are the little places you can look for that has to be near bedding and near security cover um, obviously if you've got a funnel that's out in the middle of nowhere um, usually those are obvious one and then and then two deer aren't going to be using them during the uh, daylight hours so anyway all right let's follow this back and see where these deer are are staying at and they very well could be staying right around here too so um yeah all right i picked out a tree back there and sorry i had a brain fart and didn't film anything and then walked away but you saw that uh that trail that went through there i picked out a tree on uh it would be it would be the east side of that trail because i would hunt that on a west wind i would come in from the road and then i'd make sure i never crossed that trail um which i wouldn't so i picked out a tree that was like 10 or 15 yards from that trail because i use a stick bow a lot of the times i like to i like to be if i'm if i'm 20 yards i like to be 15 and if i'm 15 i like to be 10 so i tend to probably get a little bit too close to trails um, just in hopes of getting a good shot if you guys uh obviously shoot a compound which i do sometimes too you know obviously you can you can, you can set back a little farther all right i made it out to uh the uh the transition kind of here and you guys can clearly see it. and there's actually a, a creek that's filled up right now but you can see from the the thickness of the green briars to the hardwoods here um 
it's a pretty defined area. Uh, out here I am going to not even, oh, there's a bunch of deer. You can see them or not on my GoPro. Huh. Cool. Uh, I'm pretty much not going to worry about this area right here. I don't know if I jumped those deer or if uh, someone else was walking. There was another truck parked down the road there. But anyway, uh, yeah, I was going to give you guys another tip. If, you, if you're, a, obviously we all scout in the spring a lot and um, you're probably all kind of keep an eye out for sheds. I always bring my binoculars around. It saves you a lot of uh, footsteps if you're a habitual um, uh, stick looker. If you think uh, an antler constantly looks like stick, a stick, just bring your binoculars with you. And instead of walking that 50 yards, just throw them up, take a gander real quick, and you can tell. And not wasting your time going back and forth. But I'm going to follow this transition a little bit just to see what we got going on. Um, and sorry, guys, I feel like I'm jabbering a lot in this video, but. Uh, I know we're looking, I know people are probably expecting to find like certain bedding areas or certain uh, particular beds. Oh, uh, here's a bunch of hair right here. This time of year, it's pretty common to find a bunch of hair laying around, but I know you're looking, probably trying to think, trying to think, well, where are the beds at here? And I personally kind of have a hard time finding specific beds in areas like this, unless the deer have freshly laid, uh, freshly laid down. I, I kind of, um, in certain areas, I just look for bedding areas because, um, as you guys could tell back in there, there could, the deer could bed in all kinds of different areas. And uh, I think you'd drive yourself kind of crazy trying to find a specific bed that a buck is in. Um, so I, I really like to try to find those pinch points where um, deer are going to be moving through that's really close to security cover. So, um, yeah, that's just my opinion. It's not, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. It's just sometimes I, uh, you can get frustrated thinking you found in a, a certain bed or not finding a certain bed and uh, in reality the buck may be uh, bedding all around you so, all right let's get going all right here's a uh, again I'm right on the the transition area of that green briar and here's a uh, couple of open scrapes um, I don't know what to think about them I think uh, I think we're close enough to bedding they may come out here during the dark but for me to be able to get to this spot, um, I wouldn't be able to. Uh, I wouldn't be able to get through here without spooking a bunch of deer. I don't think. Uh, so probably gonna note that, but not really pay much attention to it because it's out here in the open. If I would find some good scrapes inside that those green briars, I'd probably be interested in that. But I'm gonna work my way over to where those deer ran out just to take a look to see if something uh, catches my eye over that way. All right, I came up here where these deer came from that we jumped and um, pretty good old rub here that's uh, I mean this some of these marks here are chest high but um, <clears throat> yeah nothing nothing that big fresh though yet so I'm gonna keep on going here and <clears throat> circle around I hope you guys like these types of videos I'm trying to make them efficient and try to provide good information um, but yeah if you if you like them or don't like them let us know because uh, we're always trying to figure out ways to provide more content for for you guys and uh these are easy ones to, to put together because we're all out scouting anyway so uh yeah let us know i don't know if this means much of anything but kind of an odd thing i've never seen before i uh some more of these uh historical rubs here and the tree's broken off on the top of it and then just right down the this little faint trail i'm following another one same thing Right above the old rub, the tree's broken off. Maybe Dan's right. Maybe these deer are killing these trees. Maybe it's a great big giant one that's just pushing trees over instead of uh, making rubs. All right, guys, I'm heading back to the truck. I didn't find anything too exciting. and got to get home to the family. The wife and the kid are at home. We're going to go do something fun this afternoon, go on a hike or something. But I had a free morning, so I wanted to come out here and shoot a video for you guys. Um, I didn't find any participation trophies, no sheds, but I don't know. Seems like uh, more and more people are, are shed hunting nowadays, so it gets harder and harder to find. I used to find anywhere between 15 and 30. Obviously, someone's been here recently, um, but uh, and anymore, it's hard to find them. But uh, anyway, yeah, let me know if you guys like this video. It's going to be a kind of a short and sweet one. Um, 
hopefully you learned something from it um obviously i'm not dan in fault or or joe or anybody like that but um i enjoy making these videos for you guys and uh yeah i'll see you guys if i don't make another video i'll see you guys during turkey season for sure so uh yep have a good spring everybody see ya